Welcome to the GFCC Radio. I'm so hyped for this conversation because we got one of my homeboys. I call him part of my lion pride, Genie Dot. If you guys want, you could check out all his stuff. Today, I'm really excited to talk to Jeannie about space and time because he's got so much insight on this. Thank you so much for coming on here, bro. Yeah, for sure, bro. What's good with y'all? I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. We got a lot of good stuff to talk about. So what would you say is your definition of space and time or what you've come to understand about what space and time actually is? All right. So... Space is a conduit or an area that allows movement. And then time is the movement through that space. Now, with that being said, space is not dependent on time, but time is dependent on space. And the reason for that is because if you just have like a dot, right? Like there's no space there. So you can't move in between that. But if you have like a giant circle, now there's space and you can move in between it. Now, with that being said, the movement in between makes time, but time is like relative for the simple fact that like going from right here to right here, it could take five seconds for somebody, but 10 seconds for somebody else. So yeah, long story short, space is when you have an area or a conduit that you can move through and then time is the movement through that space. So that also makes me think about planets and like how when you're on a certain planet, it could actually, time moves very different. So like you could go to one planet and then you're there for like five years on earth time, but then you realize it was actually 10. So how does that, do you understand fully how that works or why that happens? Is it tied to planetary consciousness? So I'm not fully adverse with this, but it deals with how pretty much like the movement of planets bend space. Because when you bend space, you also bend time. And also just with like bending light also. Now when you get to light, that gets that gets way more tricky as um you and me know with triangulum. You and you know, being there, it's like for, for those of you who don't know, I'm gonna keep it long story short. It's like being inside of a house of mirrors, which is what, yeah, when I was telling Cash about it, he told me that. And I was like, yo, that's, that was on point because I was trying to explain. It. I'm like, yeah, like you go there. And then because of how light refracts, it's like you're over there, but then you're over there. He's like, it's like a house of mirrors. I'm like, yes. And so I don't fully understand why it's like that. But when light bends and refracts off of different things, it also controls how space and time manifest. So you could, you may think you're right here, but you could also be over there. And then while being over there, things can move super duper fast for you or super duper slow for you. And yeah, but it, but yeah, it's all, it's all about how the gravity makes us uh, space and time back. And it's like, that makes me think about how it's type of vibration, because it's like someone like, for example, me and you, it's like, we're having a good old time. And time's moving by real quick, but then someone else and they're, they're depressed and they hate life and time's moving real damn slow. And that's making me think about time and space and how, you know, we might as well, I was going to say this to the end, but we might as well jump right the gun here. You were talking about mental matter and astral matter. And let me quote, because my boy said he was spitting some real fire here. He goes, so he says right here, then you would generate images inside yourself and imagine the images being pressed on and vibrating the matter around you. This is astral matter. Then you would feel the energy and how it vibrates the particles around you. So if someone wanted a relationship, they would think about the relationship and then they would feel the energy and the emotion of it and then feel mm -hmm. it like tied with space. So would you say, because I remember you would always tell me like everything you think, everything you do, it's tied with space and time. And humans yeah. are just learning how to control it. Tell us a little bit more about that. You can go as deep as you want because I we're all trying to hear about that. Uh, we we could tap on a lot. A lot of things came into my mind with this. So as far as how space and time are interwoven, I mean, as far as how your thoughts and time are interwoven. So whenever you think about something, you create that timeline event to manifest. Oh, I want an apple. You can literally see yourself going to get the apple. Um, oh, 
what happened last week, you see what happened last week. Like you're like whatever you think about controls, like what time you perceive. Now understand that when it comes to reality, there's many different layers, many different realms of reality. So when it comes to these different realms, they could be seen to have different forms of matter. Like the astrum has astral matter and all this other stuff. But there's different degrees of matter. Like even inside the physical plane, you have liquid, solid gas. You know what I'm saying? You have atomic, subatomic. So there's different kinds of matter, which give you different experiences inside the astral, inside the physical, et cetera. Like inside the astral, right? You have what I call illusory astral matter. This, ki this kind of astral matter responds to your thoughts and the information that you carry inside of your mind. That's important because when you have certain experiences, right, you could be just dreaming in the sense that you are inside the astral, but, you're, but you are projecting your own thought forms inside the space around you, which is why whatever you think about controls the dream. Now, when you move beyond that, that's when you start communicating with other beings and stuff like that. But even then, you can't always interpret some of these beings. And when these beings come to you, it could be like a spirit guide, but you see it as being a teacher inside of your school. But like when you start moving beyond that, you see what it actually looks like. So there's different degrees of this matter. Now, to, to differentiate between the astral, the mental, and then even higher than that, which is the causal, right? And also with the etheric and the physical. The physical deals with material, like actual physical matter. Like I touch this water bottle and I can actually feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't move through this. Now, etheric matter, right, is what allows you to actually feel things. It allows you to actually sense things. This is the difference. This is the difference between a rock and a plant. Like a rock is solid and it can't feel nothing. It's just there. Now a rock still exists inside of all 12 realms. This is because if you go inside the astral, you're still going to see the rock because the astral forms the imagery that actually makes the rock. So an astral rock, you may touch it, you can actually move through the rock because it's just the image, but it's not actually material. It's not actually physical. So mm -hmm. with that being said, a plant, right? has a 2D awareness. It doesn't mean that it only exists inside the second density or inside the second realm. It exists inside all the realms, but it's aware of up to the second one, the etheric. That's why when sunlight hits the plant, it can actually sense it and then feel it and then make food and do all that. It has more ability than a rock. So with that being said, a step higher than that is animals and humans, but humans are hitting 4D, which is mental, but I'm going to get to that. So like I said, Physical matter, which is material, which is the material realm, allows allows things to actually become physical and solid. The etheric realm is what allows you to actually sense things and feel things. It gets often associated with the emotional body. Like the etheric and astral both oftentimes get associated with the emotional body, but I I don't like doing that fully because when you understand how emotion truly works that's just energy and motion and inside the etheric realm is where you feel all that physical energy stuff when you it's actually starting to remind feel. me of the law of one and i'm going to put the diagram up for you guys but it was like density one beingness which is just like literally elements minerals water um and it has an atomic body they call it so it's like it would have like a two billion year cycle of soul in this starting in this density and then it's like they grow so the second density would be animals and plants and then third would be us and then fourth is like it says it's love but we could say that's like astral uh mental like you said that's the big one and then fifth would be light and wisdom and then it goes higher from there so would you agree or what would you have to add when it comes to law of one and is it like would you quote it or would you say it's not too far off? I'm curious what you think about that. All right. So when it comes to like animals being 2D, it's actually kind of wrong. See, when it comes to the law of one, they actually merge certain realms at different periods of time. That's why they don't have up to 12. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when you really separate it more, animals are more astral. And the reason why is because they can actually perceive imagery. The astral, astral matter gives... uh imagery like you can actually like see an image of something now like an astral dog is the image of a dog and then it becomes physical because it gets matter attached to it like physical mm -hmm. matter so with that being said animals can perceive imagery and stuff like that animals animals are even said to be able to dream by a scientist 
but what separates the animals a human what separates an animal from a human is the fact that a human is able to perceive their own thoughts, which is actually kind of new. That's why humans can also be 3D and 4D because some humans just see things and act off what they see. They, they can't perceive their own thoughts and their own feelings. Right. So, yeah, that and so with that being said, that's the 4D being able to like perceive concrete thought. But the difference between 4D and 5D is that yeah, you could perceive your own thoughts. But people don't always understand where their thoughts come from. And that's a whole that's a whole different story. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where you get past life stuff, because oftentimes your urges and the common thoughts that you have and your desire to learn certain things come from your past lives. So that's why inside the five, you actually understand your past life stuff more, you know? And then inside the 60, you have pretty much the architects or the creators that made the source of your thoughts, you could say, and the creators that made the source of reality. So I say that 5D kind of has like ambassadors. These are beings that actually understand the creation and then they actually try to like keep it sustained and balanced. And that's why they help other people and stuff like that. Inside the 40, you're just trying to figure it all out. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, like, oh, there's spirits, oh, there's aliens, but you don't fully understand the source of any of it so you hit the 5D. And that's when you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I understand the source. Let me help everybody. The 60, you start actually creating the stuff. You actually create the realities. You know what I'm saying? But the people inside the 6D get their orders from the people inside the 7D, which I call like messengers. Because they pretty much go like, oh, okay, we want this to be manifested. People inside the 6D, you do that. And that's because they talk, the people inside the 7D talk to people inside the 8D. These are like overseers of the creation. They oversee what happens. And inside the 9th, you have pretty much, you have all the information and possibilities that are able to manifest inside of this construct. So the overseers kind of look inside the ninth. They're like, hmm, that could happen. That could happen. That could happen. We want to see this happen. Okay, beings inside the seventh. Bring this timeline and this reality to the people inside the sixth and have the people inside the sixth create that. Then they bring it down and the sixth create it and stuff like that. Then the fifth help up keeping and stuff like that. Then the people inside the fourth try to understand it. And also when it's like going downwards, it's like the fourth is kind of like the it's like the concrete code. So for example, when I tell you what a dog is, right? The word dog is like fourth realm. But if you don't know what a dog is, if I say dog, you're like, what's a dog? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you've never heard what a dog is before. So when you actually understand the abstract concept of a dog, that's 5D. You know what I'm saying? Understand the, understanding words. And that's why I'm so big on words now, because the author has been teaching me a lot about that. Because when you actually understand words, you're actually hitting more 5D. So that's actually really important. But yeah, so inside the fourth, that's where like all the concrete code comes from. Oh yeah, we're gonna have dog, we're gonna have cat. And then the image for the dog and the cat gets made inside the astral. Now you have the image of it, and then that condenses more into a um into like energy and stuff like that, like a solidified, like a solidified energy, and then that becomes actual physical matter. But yeah, so I left off on the eighth and the ninth. Yeah, eighth realm is overseers, ninth realm, you have the people that um in ninth realm, we have like all the information in, in the different uh, timelines and stuff like that for creation. Now, inside the tenth, you can kind of see that as like the Godhead. Like when people say like God, right? In the sense of like the 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 consciousness that actually creates the realities and stuff like that. The being that creates all the possible information and timelines exists inside the tenth, and then inside the eleventh is kind of the energy that makes up that being. So if you want to kind of see it in sacred geometry terms, the f the f the 11th realm comes into play when so so sort I'm going to just start with sacred geometry stuff now. Sacred geometry, right? That whole entire story goes off that before everything there's nothing, you know what I'm saying? It's just infinite void nothingness, right? It's not even like black there yet. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like when you go to sleep at night, right? Like when you're fully unconscious, you don't dream, you don't see black. It's just fully unconscious. You're just there. So it's like that. And then it's like, they're saying like, yeah, everything's just that infinite void nothingness, right? Now, at some point, a certain point inside of that void became aware of itself at that point. But it's not fully aware of itself. It's just like it's kind of just waking up. It's like when you wake up, but your eyes are still closed. So with that being said, it's like at that point, there's a dot. There's a point of awareness inside that vast ocean. 
And then that point is like, okay, I'm somewhere. Where am I at? So it looks around itself all 360 degrees, which makes a circle. Now it's like, okay, I'm inside of this space. And because it's starting to actually look now, that's when it starts to see the black. Because when you look at something, it's like a projection of light. So, but because there's nothing there, you only see it as black. You know what I'm saying? So it looks around and just sees like, it sees a certain area of black. It's like, okay, I'm here inside this circle. Now, because it could see, let's say 10 feet down, right? It goes to those 10 feet and then looks around from there. Now it sees even more. And it also looks back at its point of origin and it says, okay, I'm that point of origin, I guess. But it still wants to explore more and more. This is why space is infinitely expanding because that whole circle thing thing, that's just space expanding. Now, when the now when it's just like the infinite void, right, without black, right? That's being outside the construct, outside the universe. Now, when source is like, okay, where am I? And it becomes that all black stuff, that's the 12th realm. Now, when it starts to move around the black, and then it's like, okay, I, I'm here. Let me go to the edge of that and then see what else is out there. That's when the 11th throne comes into play because that's when you have, it's, it looks like this. It's called a Visica Pisces. It's like a Venn diagram. Inside the middle is the uh, shape that light actually comes through. This is like, this is literally a sick geometry and science and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And light is what allows you to actually see things. Now, light actually comes from intelligence and willpower. And I'm going to explain that because I know this is getting into a lot of stuff, but hey, we got time. So intelligence, right, is the ability to know things. Willpower is the ability to act out that knowledge. Now, with that being said, electromagn electromagnetic radiation is what they call light. Electromagnetic radiation comes from electric waves and magnetic waves. Electric waves comes from thought and intelligence. Magnetic waves come from willpower and emotion if you look it up they literally say that thoughts produce electric waves and that emotions make magnetic waves they literally say that you know what i'm saying now here's how this like literally looks when source was like okay hold up like i'm somewhere it gained intelligence it gained certain knowledge that it actually was somewhere and then it acted it out it looked around and then moved that so the first looking around in movement is what made the vista of pisces aka light intelligence and will you know what i'm saying and then, like I say, if you look it up, they say that thought and emotion makes electromagnetic waves. So with right. that being said, yeah, light comes from intelligence and will, and then light eventually makes space. Here's how that even works, because quantum physics, right? Yeah, we're bringing up all the sciences inside this one. Quantum <laughs> physics. <laughs> and it's crazy because, like, some of y'all may be like, oh, my gosh, it's so crazy, which it is. But, bro, there's so much more that I like, bro. <sighs> this stuff be getting crazy dog anyway because i'm keeping it this is real basic stuff bro this is like the basics this bro. is a tuesday yeah <laughs> yeah you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so with that being said in quantum physics right you have the zero point field right they also, they also call the zero point field the vacuum state now let me i have the definition of the john porter because i knew i was going to get into this at some point they call a zero point field a vacuum state now that's because a vacuum is labeled as a space that is devoid of matter. Now, a zero-point field doesn't have any matter, but it does have light, electromagnetic radiation. Now, everything comes from the zero-point field. So, the zero-point field is really, is really just a field of light. You know what I'm saying? That field of light is what actually makes space. Like, that's why they say that space is a hologram, literally, because it actually is a hologram. We pull up that definition, because, you know what I'm saying, I'm not trying to Nah, I'm not trying to butcher nothing. Y'all not, not going to catch me today. <laughs> a hologram is a three-dimensional image formed by the interference of light beams from a laser or other coherent light source. So it's a three-dimensional image that's formed by light. What is space? A three-dimensional space that's formed by light, literally. So yeah, light makes space and then movement through the space makes time. So I brought that up because I was explaining the 12 realms and how the 11th realm deals with the whole Vistica Pisces stage into eventually making the seed of life. Now, the seed of life is a shape where it's six circles on the outside, and then there's a seventh one inside the middle. This also deals with the seven rays. Of, this also deals with the seven rays of creation, which are pretty much just the seven main qualities of creation. And the seed of life is pretty much, the seed of life contains all the energy and potential that goes into creation. So 
all that that whole energy playing stuff and that's the whole 11th realm that eventually makes the creator inside the 10th realm and then the 12th realm like i said is just like infinite blackness and then you can exit the universe from there and then go into like complete nothing that's where you like don't see black or you don't see nothing it's just you're just there yeah Okay, we're going to take a quick break because it says we have three minutes left. So I just got to do a few things, but we'll be back right after the break. All right, welcome back, y'all. Ain't no way we went for 20 minutes, okay, because I was just checking and we was recording for 20 minutes. So time flying as we talk about time and space. So would you say that with everything you said so far, would you say then to simplify it for people that awareness is what's going to grant you access to these higher densities or um, higher consciousnesses, which we would say, I mean, we would say that for like astral projection and energy and all that, like you become aware of it and then it's like you there. So is it, would you say then with this, with all these other densities and you talk about space and time, would you be saying then the best way to access time and space fully to your advantage in your life is to use your awareness and gain more awareness as much as possible for you to then access these higher densities or to use space and time to your advantage? Yes, definitely. Um, and if you want to, if people want to talk about like which densities would allow you to best do it, I would say that if you want to actually like control time and space, you'd have to actually like hit the six. Now to just move through it, you would move through like you would go through the fourth. You know what I'm saying? Like once you hit like the whole mental realm stuff, that's why beings inside that's why beings inside like the 4D, like they can move through time and stuff like that, but they don't fully like understand it. They can't fully manipulate time. They can't control timelines for the whole universe. You know what I'm saying? They can just move through it ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. So if you want to actually like control it fully, right? You need to first hit the fifth, which you do that by finding out why everything happens. Like, why do you go through certain things? Um, why did you decide to come here? You know what I'm saying? Like, when you find out all these whys, because and a lot of the whys deal with growth, evolution, all this other stuff. Like, when you start seeing life, like, that's a 5D perspective. That's why people be thinking that you're super, like, huh, 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 because it's kind of true. Like, when you understand why stuff happens, is there really a reason to be mad anymore? It's like, true. You know what I'm you know, so it's like if you if you find out like the why of a lot of things, you'll hit the five D. Then naturally, being inside the five D, right? It's like you understand more and more of like how things work. Like, oh, time is moving like this because of that. This is happening because of that. And you're also because you also understand why things happen. It's like you kind of naturally want to serve the creation. And when you start serving the creation, you work with other beings that also serve the creation and tell you what to do to serve creation because those people make the creation so it's like as you understand where they also teach you as well so they'll just naturally come to you and be like hey if you want to learn about time and space like for me right i was just naturally just on my spiritual journey and stuff like that not good like i would i was understanding time and space ever so slightly before the alien stuff but then when alien stuff came through and these guys start talking to me like it was it, it was it was lit you know what i'm saying like because <laughs> i already i already had like a basic understanding and when it comes to channeling, right, sometimes the reason why you can't get certain information is because your brain has no concept for it. So it's like they're trying to talk to you, but you're like, what's going on here? You're like, you know, but then but then it's like they guide you to read a certain book. Then you read this book. You read, you read like, you read like three chapters. You don't even finish the book. You read like three chapters. You just understand the whole universe of things. You're like, oh, this is like that. And that is like this. And, and that's because they could come to you and actually use these concepts and then build on them. So I already was kind of understanding because I was already drawn to it. I always been drawn to these things, you know, like in my past lives, I was drawn to it. And because I was like that in my past lives, I'm like that now. So I was drawn to it. Then they start coming down to me, especially because I want to serve the creation. So it's like, for example, my ability to serve timelines, you know what I do now. I be I be helping people. Like I, I call it timeline surfing, healing, and activation. I will surf through different timelines. What are your most desirable ones, undesirable ones? Which one are you on right now? Then also, how can you like prevent the undesirable ones? How can you heal certain timelines to get on the desirable one? Because a lot of times, right, you can't move to the next step in your life because of old timelines playing out inside of your mind. 
once again, the mind is so important with time. You see, you want to move on to this next phase of your life, but you're still like, let's say inside this phase of your life, you want to be like a public speaker, right? But you weren't fully confident because of that old memory of being in fifth grade and you was getting bullied and stuff like that. You got to go back to that inside of your mind and then overcome that to actually move forward. You know what I'm saying? And that shit is real time, child. People need to be aware. That's some real time travel and joint. And so you got to be able to go back in time. And they say go back in time to better your future like they do in the movies. Literally, you got to do that inside your damn mind. Yes, because the thing is, right, if you were to close your eyes right now and then see a memory, and then you were fully inside that memory like it was a dream or something like that, you would see it more as time travel. You only think it's not because you could still feel your body and stuff like that, but you're literally still perceiving these realms at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. it's just that your mind is splitting. And when right. you get good at this type of stuff, you could literally choose to just think about that you're there just fully there all the time at will, you know what I'm saying? And, like, I'm not fully there yet. Like, there's times when I meditate, then I see stuff, and I just drop inside of them, like, whoa, what the heck? Like, but mm -hmm. I can't control that fully. You know what I'm saying? But I'm getting there. So life in life gets wild when you fully get there, I would imagine, because with what I'm already going through, it's kind of like, whoa, I just I meditate. And then I think about learning something. Now I'm inside of a library and I could pull out a book and I could dead ass learn something. You know, it's also funny because you could like hold these books and like you wouldn't even read it. You'll just feel the information, just know a whole bunch of stuff. It's yeah. Really crazy. Yeah, yeah bro. that's that's a Akashic Records joint, bro. I love traveling just in my mind like that. You just meditate. And you can travel memories or you could go to different timelines just in your head. Like, for example, if y'all trying to like reality shift or something, just meditating, uh, we hear this a lot. People trying to shift somewhere. Oh, I want to go to that anime and, you know, be my boyfriend. <laughs> and they want to do stuff like that. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> you could just sit in your damn mind and do it in yourself because it's like you're in your mind, you're, you're in your imagination. You're like, you're going like this in your mind. <laughs> you're like dancing in your mind. And everybody's like, you good? And you're like, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just like in that timeline because you people need to be aware your awareness is it's powerful like we hear that all the time and everybody's like yeah yeah you're right you're right but you don't understand people don't fully understand the greater power that's like just you thinking about something that happened in the past you're in that emotion you're in that feeling whether it's positive or negative you're in that emotion and then you're going in those images in your mind you're even like in your mind walking around there even touching things again and you're feeling the emotion of actually being there the energy you're manipulating all of a sudden the whole room, you're literally manipulating the frequency of the particles in your environment to flow in that vibration. So people are like, you may be thinking about something dark and people are like, why does it feel dark here? Just, yeah, you good? They just all turn their heads like, you good? They just know the source of that energy is coming for you. You're a battery, bro. So you need to be aware that with that happening, you could do and realize that this really is time travel to the greatest extent. So what Genie is saying you could take that. You may not want to be like, oh, you know, I'm going to be time traveling out my head and doing all that stuff. But you may want to start purposefully using your awareness because it's just as real as it's like you close your eyes and you're in a memory and you're walking around. Why would you not consider that real? Because mm -hmm. your awareness is there. You are experiencing that. Why would you? I'm so baffled that people consider dreams just a dream. Or if they are getting messages like, oh, it was just a, I got a, I got another message in a dream that I know is real, but it was just a dream. No, you were living that. You was touching the realm. You was running. When you lose a dream, you run and you're in that realm. So why would you not consider that real? So everything mm -hmm. like what Jeannie's saying, he's teaching you how to get access to more of the universe and have more awareness. But the core principle, the Jolly Fox ABC 123s, is you need to be aware that everything you're experiencing, even your, um, even just like your daydreaming is just as real as this, but not on the same level. It's not something you hit, but you're still experiencing it the same way. And your, your life is moving and changing because just of that daydream or that visualization or that dream or whatnot. Yes, these are, yes, this, this is all really important because awareness is the foundation of reality like you're literally living inside of awareness that observed itself and then projected light that condensed physically and then made all of this keep it keep that if i keep it very simple that's what it is you literally right. you know like inside when you when you go when you go to sleep at night right and you say oh yeah i just made this dream that's that means your awareness made the dream like oh if awareness can make your dreams why can it not be the same right here
Like when you have you have a dream and you think it's so real, you think the same thing here right now. Like th look, I'm, a, I'm look. Some y'all gonna think this is crazy, but look, I be I be reading about these Himalayan yogis and these Taoist immortals and stuff like that. People who have really transcended the dream, bro. They could make their body physical and not physical. They could do stuff like there's this one story about this immortal guy. This is not no myth or nothing like that. It's like actually happened. This man threw a rice grain at somebody who was like trying to like poke fun at him being immortal. He threw a rice grain at the guy, right? The rice screen to the other guy looked like a knife coming at his eye he started screaming like oh, oh, oh and then he was like wait what the heck and he just sees a rice grain drop down like this man literally just manipulated his mind on earth in the physical right in front of everybody else's eyes that's where that's how people know about the story because other people seen it so yeah do you see how much teacher sent in the dream like i be like i ain't gonna say i'm trying to throw rice at you but like i've been <laughs> trying to <laughs> i've been trying to get like that you know and i'm not gonna lie I could feel in my I could feel in my own mind where my blocks are like, oh nah, that's not real. Yeah, so like I was saying, even inside of my own mind, I be um I be feeling my own blocks towards doing certain stuff. But the more you the more you realize that this is literally a dream, you can actually do way more stuff. And inside of this realm, because when you have when you have the actual dream, you're actually inside the astral, like I said, like Here's the thing, right? If you want to understand when you're inside of certain in certain realms, the best way to see it is that inside the physical realm, right? The physical realm is like a Russian doll, you could say, or like concentric circles, where it's like a circle here, then a circle on the outside. It's layers. So inside the physical realm, you're actually inside of all the realms at once. And then humans, humans are said to be 3D because they have at a minimum, a 3D awareness. They could perceive imagery and then act off what they see. And then they're going to 4D because they can actually think of stuff like that. But like I was saying, right? So when it comes to the different realms, when you're like, when you're mainly seeing imagery, you're mainly inside the astral. Now you could interact with the physical via the astral, but it's like you're inside the astral looking down. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's all messed together and interpenetrating. Like there's, there's actually physical matter that could be inside the astral realm, but it's just like at like a very, very, very low level. That's where actually sub realms come from. Like, and here's an example of this. So inside the astral, I had an experience where Cash told me to go to India, right? And I was telling Cash about it. He said, I thought I told you that like in real life. And I'm like, nah, that was the astral, bro. But it's like, it seemed so physical because that's like the physical aspects of the matter inside the astral realm. You know what I'm saying? So... With that being said, right, when you're mainly perceiving imagery and that's like the biggest thing, that's the astral, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When um when you're like all up inside your head and thinking and stuff like that, that's the um mental. And then when you're kind of like inside the um causal, when you like understand the source of your thoughts, it kind of stops being thoughts. You kind of think in frequencies. It's like you'll be thinking like just hear this frequency, then this frequency, and you just understand what it means intuitively. And then it's really good school. You try to break it down because like you'll have certain beings tell you something, and it's like you understand it, but you don't have the words for it. So it's like you try to like bring it back down. You're like, okay, this this frequency, let me bring it back down to something. Like I'll be saying stuff like my inonaki language, like inakata, ikashe, ilakaka, like whatever the heck, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'll be always know what it means, but I'll be trying to be, I'll be trying to say certain words like. Hmm, like Apple. But then I'll try to like see if like a certain word matches and sometimes it be on, sometimes it don't be in like, yeah. But long story short, yeah, but you're always inside the astral when you're dreaming because like the um the imagery is so important there. Like a lot of like that's why they, that's why we say that you astral project every single night, but you often just don't remember it. And it's like when you don't remember and when you don't see stuff, you don't think of it to be real. You're like, oh, it, it didn't happen, but it actually did. And that's why when you actually build your etheric awareness via feeling stuff and everything like that, you can actually gain more memory of your astral experiences. Because like I said, inside the astral, you're not, you're not purely inside of all imagery. There's also etheric matter. That's why you can also feel stuff inside the astral. But the lighter and lighter you get inside the astral, the less and less you actually feel inside the astral. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. there's people who all, like I know people who can't fly inside the astral. That's because they're still into physical and they're like more like they have a, they have more etheric matter attached to them they can't they're not super light off of pure imagery so to make so, it more sciencey it's almost like the lower astral and the higher astral really does depend mm -hmm. on your vibration and the way you think mm -hmm. yeah definitely because and, and that's actually how it used to be defined that's why oftentimes people confuse the etheric with the astral because back in the day 
the Astro actually was called the Etheric. It's just that it's separated now because you can actually be inside the Etheric but not see anything. Like, like you can close your eyes right now and imagine yourself punching. You could like feel yourself punching, but not actually see anything. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. could also see it. You, you you could also see it and then not feel it. You know what I'm saying? That's more astral than etheric. So that's how you actually work out the different bodies. You know what I'm saying? When you want to when you want to work out the astral body, see yourself moving around, and then when then when you want to do the etheric body, actually feel yourself moving around. So yeah, but when when you build your etheric awareness, you can actually like feel what you did the previous night, like. Like you just know, like oh, this feels like Octaurus, and it feels like I learned about sacred geometry here. And then, like you kind of like it's like you, if you're really good at being able to turn like your feelings into imagery, it's way easier to get the memories back because it's like the way I I always call it like empathic sight, and I say it's kind of like if somebody was invisible and they stood in front of you, right? Then you threw paint on them. You could like see their form. So mm-hmm. it's like your emotions are like the paint and like it kind of like shapes out the image a little bit. Like it's the best way. That's the best way I can describe it for myself at least. So cool. yeah, but long story short, I was saying how when you're inside of dreams, right? It's definitely like, it's that is the astral is just that when it's those dreams where like whatever you think appears and stuff like that, it's because you're, proje- it's because you're projecting your own thought forms. Now, when it's like a message oftentimes your spirit gods control that dream. So even then, you like, oh, my spirit gods don't talk to me. They gave you a whole dream last night. What you talking about? Right. So, <laughs> so like, yeah, so that's all astral stuff. But um, yeah, I'm going to just leave it at that. Yeah. It makes me think about 5D because a lot of people were asking us, especially about 5D and being in that consciousness. Well, we all be starting out like 3D. You're just focused on everything physical. Then 4D, you're like, okay, energy's real astral's real my mental space my dreams all that joint is real and then you get to 5d and that's when you become an awareness of your soul and become aware of okay i'm a soul and then you start going into the higher 5d when you start realizing yo i'm here for a mission like i basically already mastered all this i'm just accumulating again what i know now let's get into it because a lot of you guys that are watching come from six seven eight d beings but you are here and you lowered and you said, okay, I'm going to go into a lower body to help out in certain areas. Just like how they don't want earth. We need to get this straight. People need to realize that the goal is not to get earth to be a high dimensional planet. It is to be able to have higher density awareness while still having low density attributes. So being able to have, because beings want to incarnate here to have a physical body, but they're mm-hmm. not trying to, if we were to make earth into a high density place, there would be no physical attributes. Like if a physical being were to come here, it'd be desolate, but then you go into higher dimensions and it's full of life. And it was like, Whoa, mm-hmm. this city's here. So the goal is to make sure that we could have this higher awareness while having a physical essence and not forgetting because that's very common is they come here and they forget. That's why we have our spirit guides and we have all the spirit team for that. So you have all these layers of you. You need to be able to master them right now because right now you're in 3D, you're in the astral, and you're in the soul level. Right at this very moment, you're like, me, me? Yes, you right exactly now. You just now need to step in that awareness as to what you really are, what that is. So you're like, okay, I have my physical body. When I want to eat that damn cheeseburger, that's me in 3D essence like i'm like i I need me some damn food but then you're in 4d and you're an astral like okay tonight i'm gonna be traveling or i'm gonna be doing this or um i got this in my dream or this energy i feel when i'm around this person you're in 4d 5d is when you're like you're you're in like soul awareness okay i came here for this purpose why am i incarnated on this planet what is my true who am i truly those are deep questions that put you in that 5d awareness and that's why you get past life memories because you're in that awareness level so all of a sudden you have access just like when you're 40 you have you're aware to ask on the energy and all the astral works now you are able to actual project or lucid dream and all that stuff so when you're 5d you're gonna get those past life memories you're gonna get extended abilities just as you did in 4d you're gonna have all these things so keep it simple in your mind physical astral and and soul you know there's more you know there's even some deeper now what 
a lot of what Jeannie's giving you now as well was stuff to help you understand what's way higher and what's way technically lower. So hopefully that helps put you in awareness. But no, yep, these three ones, physical, astral, and soul, are the core ones that's like like trying to understand, okay, where are we at now? What's going on to get you in your britches? The universe is the most mysterious place ever. So in your awareness growing, the more awareness you get, the more questions you get. You're like, you look at us, you guys are like, oh, you guys are in 5D. I mean, we're all in a, these different levels, but okay, we're in 5D. Okay, yes, we have memories of who we are and all that type of stuff. But now that we're here, it's like, it's like when you you go up in an elevator, then you can see even higher than where you were before. And then you go even higher, and then you can see even higher. So it's like there's more. So now we're looking at, okay, how's Earth going? What's going on with Astro Project? We need to go on Mothership and see what's up. Then we're doing all these conversations and, and things and missions, but we're in a different mentality and working toward different things and defeating different challenges than where you're at here. So never will people that are in high awareness look at you unless unless they're kind of false or they're they're acting. Nobody that's really truly up here is going to act like they're bigger or none of that type of stuff. Because once you get to soul, you realize, oh shit, like we're all literally the same, just different journeys and different purposes and different personalities, which is what we need. So you'll know who's true and what's not right from energy. People talk about, oh, you get more Buddhist. Hell yeah, you get a little more Buddhist and everything's lit and kind of nice because you see this literally like a video game. Like I'm aware this is just my physical vessel. And then when I astral project, I'm in my astral vessel. And then I have my soul awareness, which it's like it's like jumping in a video game. Like I'm like you're playing Sims or you're playing World of Warcraft and you're the character in the game. And you're literally in the game, but you're still the person holding the remote and controlling it. We are the higher awareness that decided we need to put all of our awareness here. Up there, it's like we're sleeping. Like that awareness is sleeping and guiding us while our full attention is in these bodies to do what we do in. And then we're going to go back up for sure later. Yeah, bro. All that is spot on. And that, that I like the... um. The character video game analogy a lot because that's really accurate to how life is. Navy deals with ego and all this other stuff. Like, so it's not a video game. It's it's like not necessarily real in the sense that if it's GTA, you're not actually Franklin. You know what I'm saying? But even still, you play the game to have fun, to have certain experiences, all this other stuff, right? And there's dead behind missions, side missions, all this other stuff. So with that being said, right, it's the same in life. That's why you know, I said, like, that's why even though I said life is a dream, it's not like, oh, I could just fly whenever I want. Like, now you got to upgrade the character and stuff like that. Because this is with the ego now, because the ego, right, could be defined in many different ways, right? Originally, when it was first, when the word ego was, like, made, it actually just meant I. Like, etymologically, Ego just means I. It's when you identify with yourself. It's your sense of individuality and identity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which could be good and bad because you want to be an individual. You want to play the video game as a separate character, but it's bad when you get attached to the character. So it's like, if you want to call, so ego in like, it's like regular sense just means your sense of self, but like the whole bad aspect is when you get attached to your character. So nowadays I'll say that, okay, since ego gets, since ego gets such a bad rep, I'm going to say ego means attachment to your character. And then you mm -hmm. have the self, which is the self is just your sense of self before self and ego were exactly the same, but now I'm separated because how people are nowadays, which is cool. But because here's an example, right? Inside a video game, right? If you don't upgrade your character, bro, you're going to get smoked by everybody. Like, why would you not upgrade your character? But at the same time, there's people who, like, get lost inside the game. The game becomes their whole entire life. They're so caught up. If if they lose inside the game, they're like, oh, my God, it threw a whole entire fit. They lost their real life now. And it's like that with other people. They'll be inside their real life, real life. They'll be playing this game and stuff like that of the 3D matrix, if you want to call it that, right? And then you play in it, and then something goes wrong. You're like, oh my God, I lost the game. You get really mad. But bro, chill, it's just a lesson. Like, if it's an actual video game, you would lose the round and then learn why you lost and just get better. So do the same. 
But and now let's talk about this also. While upgrading the character, there's people who upgrade the character a whole bunch, and then they're also lost inside of the game. So yes, upgrade your character, but don't be like, oh yeah, I'm I'm such a beefed up character, ha ha, because then you become right. attached to the game and this now you become attached again. So right, yeah, up, upgrade your character. But remember that it's test a character. Don't get attached to the character, you know? And then with past lives, that's just like multiple different characters and stuff like that. So don't get attached to your past lives, you know what I'm saying? Because yes. like some people some people are like more attached to one form than others, which could be cool in the sense of like you like using this form, but you still understand that I'm not truly this form. And then other people it's just like using a whole bunch of forms. You know what I'm saying? You're talking to the yin and yang's right here. I love a whole bunch of forms. My man love, loves the lyra form. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, even with that, we both still understand that these are just forms that we use. It's not like we're attached to these. So, like, with me, for different things inside of my life, I'll use a different form. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. if I'm trying to do, like, some shadow healing stuff for somebody, I like my... um my obsidian amethyst dragon because, like, it's very psychic and it can kind of see all things, especially people's shadows. So I'm gonna use that form of doing a shadow healing and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? If mm -hmm. it's like an if it's like an angelic greeting, I'm gonna do some like 6D Altoria Archangel stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm gonna just shift my forms for different purposes. You know, if I'm gonna fight Big Alpha Draco, come on now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I have different forms for different purposes. You know, but that that's just what it is. It's not like, oh yeah, I'm a dragon. I'm wait, I got all these dragon forms. Ha ha, look at me. Like no, you know what I'm saying? Because there's people who know their past lives and they're not really that high in consciousness. You know what I'm saying? Like, they see this past, I'm like, oh my God, that's so me, but they can't even do what that form does because if they were truly inside that form, they wouldn't even think inside this way because that past life is so high up. It's like, yeah, like, I am this, but I don't really care that I'm that. But being down here, when someone sees it, they're like, oh yeah, I was this great being before, and I did all this, and yeah, look at me, but it's like, yeah, just don't get don't get lost in that sauce because even with mm -hmm. me, right? A lot of stuff that I say about awareness and consciousness, I low key knew this stuff for years. And I'm not trying to be that kind of guy. You could you can look on my YouTube though. Like I've been seeing a lot of stuff for a long time, and that was before I knew my past life stuff. You know what I'm saying? I just mm -hmm. worried about ascending. My goal was just ascending in consciousness. You know what I'm saying? So I just learned a whole bunch of stuff. But then the past life stuff popped up, and then it showed me why I'm already like that. So. Mm -hmm. With that being said, you could not know your past lives and be super high up. And you could also know your past lives and be not high up in consciousness. So I know people want to get their past lives, which is really cool. But don't make that like the only goal. I want to know my past lives and my past lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. But I, but I will give you a tip, though. See, see 4D as your personality and then like Cass said, 5D is your soul. And the reason why is because in 5D, right? You understand the cause of all things, including like why you are, how you are. Like a lot of the stuff that you're drawn to, you're only drawn to because of your past life stuff. You know what I'm saying? So if you try to find out, dang, why am I even like this? It starts to make sense why you're like that. You know, like literally I could, people could be like, well, why are you like this? Why are you like that? I, and I'll be able to tell them. Oh, back in this past life, about a few million years ago, I was this big, and then I used to like, <laughs> to travel through time, and you know what I'm saying. And so it's like, crazy yeah. As hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But it's true though. So yeah, try to just find out the why of why you are how you are. You know what I'm saying? That gets into past life stuff, literally. And it's like you you only gotta always be like, oh yeah, like I was this crazy being. Sometimes you just know. Oh, I like magic. I was definitely some kind of witch before. I did some right. kind of magic or something like that. Like, that should be a given at this point. You mm -hmm. know, that's, that should be your automatic. If you like certain stuff, especially if no one in your family likes it, like, you love to paint, but there's no painters inside your family, bro. You you like, like, you did some art stuff in the past, bro. Can we, like, stop it? Like, stop <laughs> it, bro. You, <laughs> yeah. know, you know you did, bro. Stop playing. So, yeah. That's, yeah. Inc that's incredibly crucial. I like how you said it. it's like, you could have no awareness of your past lives and be flying in this lifetime, or you could have so much information and not be moving at all. And we've seen that before. So we understand on how that could take you and being too focused on what you did. And it's like, okay, well, you're on earth now. One, you're a human. Yes, you could say you're a hybrid. That's what the government calls us. We're hybrids. But you just have experience in all those different in all those different game bodies, you had so many different game bodies. And one, yes, you were king or queen here. And this other one, you were warrior. This other one, you were a healer. Okay, cool. 
that's what you did. That was your game character in that time. Now you have a new game character and you can take your experience from those other ones and apply that into this one now. That is the huge reason why we're here and getting in the 5D that gives you access to these and it allows you to not get too egotistical, but to see the egos and then to operate above that. That's the core principle. Jeannie, I want to thank you for coming on here because our next one, you guys know we're going to talk about a little bit of deeper stuff. Probably going to talk about some astral travels and some of our places we went to. Okay, so we're going to get into that for damn sure. Jeannie, any last words for the homies? I always say this. Love yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> please, please love yourself because no one's gonna love you till you do it yourself. And plus, no one has no one has this high vibe love that you want besides you. You know what I'm saying? Like you gonna give yourself what you really want and what you really need because you know who you are. You are you. So give that to yourself because you deserve it. And that's coming from your boy. And I love you genuinely. So yeah, if I love you, you could love you as well. Yo, you may you make corny shit sound gangster and shit <laughs> like because everybody's like yo we heard that before but you say it everybody's like yeah yeah you're right bro you're right <laughs> i appreciate that bro <laughs> i love you and you know what guys he's love so too, bro. damn right so i want you guys to remember that always and we will be back so thank you for watching the show you've been on gfcc radio